For the last 13 years, we've been teaching you how to tune cars. And over that time, we have collected some stuff. It's all really cool stuff, like this gaggle of K20 engines for the engine building course, or that LS2 motor over there. All these piles and piles of awesome parts. We've got brakes, we've got clutches, there's shifters, there's all sorts of stuff in there. And it's all awesome. I'm Ben Silcock. And you may recognize that name from the emails that I send from High Performance Academy about training courses we offer. We've got Andre's dream car here. We've got a CRX that I really like the look of on Facebook Marketplace. That container over there has got an EF Civic in it and on top of it is a chassis for our C10. And the reason that we haven't finished any of these project cars is because we've spent all of our time making training courses. Which doesn't mean that we're not working on cars. We've put this RX-7 together for our rotary engine tuning course. But it's still got so much stuff left to go before I can drive this on the street. And then we've got our SR86 race car that we've been working on for ages. We've been using it as examples in many of our training courses. So we're making some changes. Don't worry, we're still gonna be producing high quality courses to help make your car go faster. But we're also gonna be increasing the amount of content we bring out of this workshop. We've employed a couple more people behind the camera and a couple more people holding tools so we can get these project cars finished a lot faster. And we're gonna start with this project right here. This is my FJ40. I've owned it for around about 10 years and it's probably not the sort of car you would immediately think of when you think of HPA projects. Let's be honest, it's pretty slow. The idea of the project was essentially to build a resto mod, basically modernize everything that goes into the truck, but still have it look like an original FJ40 on the outside, despite the fact it's gonna have aftermarket wheels. Pulling out three of the resto mods that we've done that are probably my favorites. The first would be the suspension, which is actually going to completely transform the way the truck drives. They're really agriculture in stock form. Now it's going to drive like a modern truck. Secondly is the heated seats. It gets really cold here in Queenstown, probably minus five in the mornings in winter, and I don't like having a cold bum. And the third one is the electric handbrake. This makes it really easy to convert to disc brakes all round, but driving the electric handbrake is a little bit challenging and this actually requires a bit of electronics that we've got from Motec, which is one of their DHBs or dual half bridge controllers. A half bridge controller essentially, you think of it in its simplest form as a solid state relay. So you can use a low current output from an ECU to control a high current motor or other actuator, in this case the electric handbrake. It's a little bit more advanced than that with dual channel or dual half bridge outputs. We've got the ability to drive a motor in two directions so we can polarity reverse them. Obviously important for a handbrake, we want the polarity in one direction when we're driving the handbrake on and we need to reverse that to drive it off. So each of the half bridge outputs can either switch to 12 volts or switch to ground and by alternating that, that's how we do the polarity reversion. On top of this, we can also pulse whip modulate the output. So this is really important for speed control on a servo motor, for example. Most modern ECUs actually have half bridge outputs built into the ECU because these are also used for the likes of drive-by-wire throttle bodies. Now that we've covered off the basis of the project, I'll pass you over to Barry, who will quickly cover off some of the componentry that's currently fitted. Triangulated forelink for extra travel, coilover hoops, hydraulic bump stops, ARB Air Locker, 2008 Hilux R151, a 4.3 litre 3 UZ from a GS400, custom stainless headers, 4 pot Range Rover Brembo calipers, Audi A6 electric handbrake caliper, BMW E46 ABS module with custom copper nickel brake line, reupholstered GD86 seats, full Motec Motorsport electronic package. Here's Caleb to explain more. As Barry said, we're running a full MoTeC system in this build, utilizing a M170 ECU and two PDM32s to distribute power. So let's jump into it with step one. The first step of this process is to work out the specifications of each component we're going to utilize and to create a circuit design and layout that's going to be both efficient and reliable on the road and off the road. We'll quickly jump into this and I'll show you how I've laid it out to show the specifications. As you can see in the spreadsheet here, I've listed things under part, quantity, a checklist if we have the unit or not, type, current, position in the vehicle, and a section for notes and a product link if needed. For example, our light bar from Baja Designs, we only have one of those. We don't have it in stock yet, so I haven't checked that. It comes under a lighting type, 
The current drawer on that one is fairly high, so we need to keep that in mind in our circuit design. I've noted that it's gonna be mounted on the roof and just where it comes from and a link for it. Additionally, we have the Motec C127 dash. We have that already, so it's ticked off. I've listed it as a control unit because we have inputs and outputs. The current drawer on that will be fairly low. It's going to be mounted in the cab. And I've also noted the CAN bus because we're gonna to have to keep that in mind in our layout. As a final example, the seat heaters. I've listed them under power because they're a heating element which will just need power supplied to them. That current drawer is gonna be quite high, so we'll need to keep that in mind. And they're also gonna be mounted in the cab. Understanding our specifications is going to help build a good circuit design where our components all work together. It's also going to help us consider things like wire size, how our CAN bus is going to be run, and any bulkheads or other connections we might need to make. We've only briefly touched on step one of the 10 step process. If this is something you're interested in learning further, we have several courses on our webpage which cater to the home enthusiast all the way up to motorsport level concentrically twisted harnesses. If you're just interested in learning a little bit more, follow along and we're going to keep bringing out more content on the wiring process and the FJ build. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.